Hey everyone, welcome back. If you've not been here before, my name is OJ Etter. I'm a level three infrared thermographer and have been a part of the world of infrared and reliability consulting for 20 years. Today we are talking about infrared resolution and what is so important to know about that when buying your next infrared camera. So if you look back at last week's video, that's right up here, we talk about and show the resolution difference between a 160 by 120 and an 80 by 60 camera. This is one of the images that I showed in that. It's an image from this C2 without the MSX overlay. Here is the image with the MSX overlay which gives us the highlights of the digital on top of the infrared. But that looks like a lot sharper of a picture, doesn't it? But it actually winds up being like this. That's the actual thermal that we're getting from the C2. Okay, so before we begin to discuss the infrared camera resolution, let's discuss a little bit about resolution in general. This is one of my first digital cameras ever. It was one of the first cameras that I could actually download images rather than taking the film in. So this little bitty camera would take images in two different formats, a 320 by 240 and a 640 by 480 resolution. What that means is the width of your image is 640 little dots that make up the image. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. So to better understand that, we're going to take a look at some pictures that I have here. So if you remember our, our Radio Shack flat photo camera, it would give us images in a 320 by 240 resolution. And also it would give us a 640 by 480 resolution image. Okay, so to better understand this and put this into perspective, in relationship to the digital camera and the infrared cameras, we're going to look at a couple of pictures. So we all know and we've, we've heard of our digital cameras on our phones being really large, 60 megapixel, 8 megapixel, we hear that thrown around all the time. So that means there's 16 million pixels in a 16 megapixel image. So here's an example of a 16 megapixel image and I'm going to blow that up to 100% so that you can see there and you can see in that situation how much of our image is not in the screen. So we're going to put that back back down to uh, with, within our screen and I'm going to bring in the 640 by 480 images and then I'm going to bring in the 320 by 240 images so we can see the, the size differences. So if we go to our 640 by 480 image we can see how much smaller. It's basically just the pixels of his head, the whole image. And in, in this situation this is about, it would take about 52 of those images to fill up the whole screen of this image. So now let's take and bring our 320 by 240 in. So there's our 320 by 240. There, that's not even, he could use that as his corona mask. He could use his little, his little picture as his corona mask. So in, in that situation, we need 208 pictures of that little 320 by 240 in order to fill up that 16 megapixel. Now let's look at that in comparison to our, our 640 by 480 and we're going to overlay our 320 by 240 on top of this and if we we put it in the corner we can see that there are four quadrants which means this 320 by 240 image is four times smaller than the 640 by 480. So now let's put that in relationship to our infrared images in comparison to these digital images. So if we take a 
image from here. I'm not going to overlay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prop these images down to that size. So we'll take and we'll crop our image to an 80 by 60. And if we were to do that, we would just crop into the 320 by 240s, the head on my son. And if we undid that and we went to a 160 by 120, which is the size of our C5 images, we can see that that would basically be a quarter of that 320 by 240 image. So in this case, if we look at it in comparison to infrared camera sizes, this is going to be approximately one quarter the size of the 160 by 120. And the 160 by 120 of a C5 in comparison to a 320 by 240 like a E8 infrared camera, we can see that that's going to be just a quarter of that size. So now let's put that in relationship to some actual infrared images themselves. If we take now and look at the comparison of two images, a C2 and a what's it called the E8, which is a 320 by 240 resolution camera. If we look at our E8 image here and we look at some water on the floor, we can see that we can see where each of the drops of water have gone into the carpet. And if we change over to our C2 image and we blow that up, we can see that we can just see one of those spots and maybe a little bit of a couple others, but we don't very well see at all the detail. So that is where resolution wise, where it makes a difference. And that is where having more resolution is more beneficial. Depending on the application that we use, we want to be able to have more resolution to be able to pick out smaller defects. So I'll show you another comparison here of looking at a former E40 infrared camera, which had a 160 by 120 in comparison to a 320 by 240 infrared image. And this is looking at a house where we can see some leakage coming in from the outside. But notice as we blow this up to uh, about 400%, we can see the actual pixels on the image itself. Now, if we go to our 320 by 240 image of that same house, we can see a little bit better the detail of what is occurring within this house and what we're able to see. So as we increase our resolution of our image, we increase the ability to be able to see smaller and smaller and be able to narrow down more where our problem areas are. I want to show you some images that I took of my dog. Here is him with the C2 camera with the MSX turned on. This next image is, is the same image without the MSX turned on. This is the infrared only or the native infrared resolution image. Now we'll go to an image that I took with a TG165, which also has a 80 by 60 resolution. And you can see here, again, we can tell he has a cold nose, we can tell where his eyes are, but we can't tell much else in the details. Now if I go down here to an image that I took with my T540 camera, which I'll put the resolution of that camera right here. I don't remember it off the top of my head. But we can see that this image, we can actually see the individual hairs on the dog. We can tell exactly where his nose is. We can see his toenails. We can see his eyes. And we can see where the, the heat is within his ears. Another image comparison that we'll give you is of a window. This is my recording studio. And this is a narrow view of that recording studio. Here is a wide angle view of that same studio. And notice the amount of detail that we can see. I have a little trophy up here. There's a lamp. We can actually see, we can see the studs in the wall. 
and we can see areas that, that there's leaking air inside because this is a through the wall air conditioner, which gets a little bit of air leakage and our windows that aren't closed completely. Now, if I take that same image and we look at that same image with our PG165 camera, we can see that uh, we can tell there's a window. We don't really know what that blob is or any of these other blobs. And then if we look at it again with our C2 camera, we can again see, we can see the window, we can see that umbrella and the air conditioner. And here I'll show you the actual picture that we are looking at. So that is the area that we are actually videoing. So we hope you got quite a little bit out of that and you better understand infrared resolution and the importance of having the right infrared resolution for the camera that you buy for your specific application. If you have any questions, you can comment below and let us know. If there's any other topics that you would like to know about, you can also let us know that in the comments below. You can visit our website. You can check out the cameras that we sell. And you can join us next week when we are going to talk about infrared temperature guns and the comparison of knowing your spot size ratio. So till next time, thanks for joining us and have an utterly awesome day. Bye.